Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 9. But let love be without dissemination. Harbor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Mr. Gilbert, we pray for us. Thanks, Father, for this word. May be seated. I appreciate you standing in honor to God. Uh, today our passage begins with Brother Paul. He began to bring out the idea, as the Greek would know it, in that day an actor, that's where we get our word dissemination or hypocrisy or, or being ungenuine or being masked. You know, a title today is time to unmask our love. And in that day, an actor would come out and he would put on a show. And he, that same person would, would have many, many different parts to play. He would come out with a smiling face mask on when he was smiling. And then a different scene was opened up and he would have a mask over him as maybe an anger or sad. And it would show his feeling. But, you know, he said, do not be like that. So to be a... Uh, Christian, we should, uh, our love should be honest. We should unmask who we are and we should show the love to the world. And when we take off our mask, this is what they were going to see. <coughs> let your love be without dissemination or concealed. Don't let your love be, at times, do not be behind, behind a mask. Today, I thought it was just appropriate. Uh, because our uh, society, everyone has to wear that medical mask. Everywhere we go, we have to social distance. And one of the things about that, we cannot see people's smiling faces. We cannot see their expression. We cannot see the, what they're feeling because, you know, uh, they are, it is hidden. And Paul is saying the same thing to his society, that we should unmask our, our action toward people. Our social actions, our spiritual action, and also our attitudes and our affections. We should be honest in, at this time. I know we're in the dark days. We, in, we are in perilous times, and people need to see the, the love of Christ. I think this in these dark days, you can let that little light shine brighter than ever. It's time to have a, uh, uh, to put a mask on no, uh, so no one can, no, uh, that we can really see that what's true in our Christian life. We need to tell people that we love them. Uh, that's what, that we are Christians and we are born again. That we are here to help people, to pray for them. But the way we act doesn't show it. What Paul is really saying in these verses is that it's time to put our faith in the shoe leather. We need to live it out. We need to act it out. We need to tell people today. These verses are filled with challenges for the children of God who live together. Before the Lord and the, the world and before uh, uh, as a God-honoring family. If these verses were heeded and lived out, we would unmask and it would be practiced. We would uh, evolutionize our society, our church, and our society, our nation. We need to be unmasking our actions toward our brethren, verses 9 through uh, 15, it says here, uh, let love be without dissemination. It says be honest, be genuine. It means to come together and harbor, har uh, harbor what is evil and cling to that which is good. You know, our religion has a negative side and has a positive side. We should, uh, we should dislike, we should... Uh, get away and leave everything that is bad, that is evil. We should uh, turn away from hating one another. We should not be stealing or killing. And the great commandments, they said, what is the great commandment? Love the Lord with all your heart. And what is the second? Love one another with all your heart. If we love the Lord, that would take care of the first four commandments. We would not be taking his name in vain. We would not be putting anything before him. We would not be uh, creating other God. If we loved our neighbor as ourselves, we would not be stealing. We would not be gossiping. We would not be wanting and coveting. We would not be wanting to do him harm or kill him. 
So love is what Paul says, but we are not showing that. There was a man who uh, neighbor's house was on fire. He went out, he got a bucket. He filled up the bucket, ran across the yard, dashed the house with the bucket, went back. A guy passing by said, you know you're not going to put that fire out. He said, I know that, but don't let it ever be said. I never did all that I could. I mean, we're not going to change the world, but we can sure help our church, our community, our family. You need to tell them. You need to show them the love of God. It says here, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one to another. It says be honest, love with uh, honest love and be a genuine like our Savior loved us. You know, this is, could be a turning point. But the good Lord said it, uh, Romans, this is one of my, one, I think it's one of the greatest chapters in the Bible. It says in Romans 12, 1, it, the, Romans is basically four parts. It's still about the wrath of God, that we all see in the come short of the glory of God, and we are deserving punishment. Then it talks about the grace of God in chapter 3, that God, he so loved us that he commended his love toward us while we were yet sinners, and he sent his son to die for us on the cross. And then it says here, it, uh, in verses 9, 10, and 11, it talks about the plan of God. But then in 12 through Romans, it talks about the will of God. And this is what God would want for us. If you ever want to know the will of God? It's Romans 12, verse 1. Connects back to chapter 8. I beseech thee, therefore, uh, brethren. Talks about the saved. It talks about those born again. Be merciful uh, by the mercies of God that you should present to your bodies. It said, uh, your body is living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. That's your, your, your reasonable service. You know, it's hard to be a living sacrifice. I mean, they sacrificed things. They killed, uh, I'm sure the girls rep, uh, learned about their sacrifices. <laughs> what did they do? They killed the sacrifice. But we are to be a living sacrifice. You know what our problem is with flesh? Way too often we want to get off that sacrifice, don't we? Boy, we want to get up and go our own way. We want to do our own thing. But God said we should live for him. It says in verse 9 to be honest with one another, as Christians said. Here it says to be uh, kind and affectionate one to another as we live our life. It says here not thoughtful in business, fervent in the spirit, and serving the Lord. We should be here. We should be. We shouldn't be lazy. We shouldn't be. Uh, we should be hard working before others. We should let people see it. We should be fervent in spirit. We should be passionate about serving the Lord. We should be. It says here. It says preferred uh, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instance in <clears throat> prayer, be steadfast in prayer. You know, a lot of people in our church, probably one-third of our church or more, are not here. They are uh, not here. They uh, either are a medical condition or they are uh, kind of not ready to come back. But that shouldn't be a time when, to do nothing. You should be reading and praying. You should be down on your knees for our country, for our church, and for one another. And so many people, anxiety has gone up. Fear has gone up. Suicide has gone up. This is the time you can send a card. You can be, you can pray for them and intercede for, for them. You can make a phone call. You can check on them. You can see if they need anything. This is a time. It's not a time for do nothing. But you no, know, we need saints of God. We need those people. If they not, uh, you know, feel comfortable to come, we still need their prayers. Those who have experienced life, those who have fought the battle, those who beat back the briars and got on their knees for us. We need them. And if they're not comfortable coming in physically, they should come in spiritually. They should be constant in prayer for us. They should be praying. This is a time to grow in the word and in prayer. The instant in prayer. Distributed to the, ne the necessity of the saints. You know, a lot of people are in need. A lot of people don't. They are by themselves. A lot of people can't make it to the store, can't go to the Tiggly Wiggly, or don't want to go to Walmart. Call them and say, can I pick you up something? What can I do for you? They was a bricklayer. He 
uh, fell from the scaffold up there. He fell and cracked his back. Doctor, he was very active in the church, and he fell and broke his back, cracked it. And a man said, well, what you going to do now? He, uh, he said, well, I just started my phone ministry. <laughs> Because all I could do was talk on the phone, but he called people and he prayed with them. He kept on. It's just one closed door is still another open door for a child of God. We still have way to minister and to help one another. We should be thinking about and serving God. We should be passionate and we should do that. You know, we should be honest. We uh, know that uh, the same is true in all our Christian life. You know, we should be unmasking our actions for one another, our social actions. And we know that, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave. You know, love does have action. Love, faith, uh, faith does have works. True faith. It does not save you. It not take you to heaven. Just like baptism and baptizing is a commandment of Lord Jesus Christ to follow up. But it will not save you. You do that because you are saved. And it is commandment by our Lord Jesus Christ to be in obedience to that. We do an outward confession of an inward change. I mean, but God so loved the world, what did he do? He gave. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now I'm going to continue that thought tonight about everlasting life. You know, people say they all through the Bible it says once you're saved, you have everlasting life. Uh, if you can lose it, it's not everlasting life. It's part-time life. I mean, it's not of what we did. Or what, uh, it's what the good Lord did for us. He so loved us, he gave his only begotten son that he might die for us. <coughs> Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world. If he did, God would have sent a condemner, but he sent a savior. We, do, we can't have victory in this life. We can't, we can't have victory in this Christian life. Paul tells us how that, uh, you know, that uh, we die to, uh, in the baptismal and we come up in newness of life shown in baptismal in our, when we get saved and we do have eternal security. No, they, no condemnation in those that uh, are in Christ, Romans 8, 1. And no separation at the end of that verse. But that is the beginning uh, Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, I beg of you, therefore, brethren. He talked about brothers and sisters. He talked about cuz. He said, by the mercies of God, let your, uh, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God. This is our reasonable service. Not to get saved, not to stay saved, but because we are saved. It's hard to live in a Christ, uh, hard to live a Christ life, life when we don't know who God is. We need to come to church. We need to read. We need to, to listen to the preaching. We need to uh, listen to the word of God. He said here we need to unmask our uh, love. We need to be honest. We need to cling to that which is good. We, we need to be loving in verse 10. We need to be humble in verse 10b. It says uh, here we, we in honor of preferring one another. Be humble, be diligent, don't be lazy. Keep reading, keep praying. Keep in contact with one another. And keep in contact with God. Are you seeing? Are you praying? If you're not, why not? I mean, we all seem like we have time. <coughs> Some people just need to stay, stay off Facebook a little and get back into his book a little bit. Tell you what, sometimes I have to get cut off the news for about a day or two you know, and sometimes I have to kind of push myself away from TV, and then you go back and see how really bad it is. I mean, you get immune to that, you get adjusted to that, get into the Word. But we need to unmask our uh, actions socially, but also we need to uh, unmask our love uh, spiritually. So to be humble, to be diligent, uh, are you praying? Be helpful to one another, 13. Be open. It's a time, it says here, that it's not a time to build walls. It's a time to uh, give in hospitality in verse 13. Bless them that persecute you, bless and curse not. Be kind. You know, the, uh, hating what is evil and clinging to that which is good. We need to 
to be devoted to one another, devoted to the good Lord. Don't not being lazy, but being on fire to serve the Lord. Recognize, rejoice in it in hope. Be compassionate one another. It says here, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep to them that weep. You know what that means? We do rejoice a lot of time when people come to the Lord that they have blessings or a new child is born or they have a blessing and a new home is built or they uh, have a spiritual uh, dedication or rededication. We rejoice in that. But we also weep with those who weep. A lot of times we do weep. We I buried, buried a lot of good friends. I had to walk to the graveyard a lot of times and I do weep. I, uh, you know, we all have compassions and emotions and we it just sometimes we don't uh, uh, it's more important to be there than what you say but you know we do weep also with broken homes broken lives, broken marriages a lot of times whether it's the, being in the south they, they tell you how to live right they tell you how to, to be uh, polite yes ma'am how to live right you know to don't have a, a physical relationship before marriage they are very biblical you know don't uh, no living together before marriage and divorce only be, uh, because of adultery abuse or abandonment I mean being in the south we do uh, we had a lot of good people we, we have been brought up knowing the right way but don't let that die out don't let the religion, the old time religion, your mama had, your grandma had, your grandpa had, is the same religion you need today. This with word is the same word. Amen. It's a living word. We need to get back with that. It doesn't get old. You can read a newspaper and you can lay it down. It's done with. But the good Lord will speak to you day after day in this word. It's new. It speaks to you. It says, unmask her action and social but also spiritually it says we need to be holy we need to be excited fervent we need, what is missing in our churches today is a joy the joy of worship the joy of singing the joy of coming before the lord that saved your soul <coughs> be faithful serve the lord be happy verse 12 be hopeful be steadfast in prayer and be, be prayerful we need to walk as a family and and we need to unmask our attitude toward one another in 16 and 17. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but to condescend of men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense <coughs> to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of the Lord. You know, we need to walk as a family. Walk in unity. Walk in love. We need to walk in fellowship once again. Again, we need to. Uh, we're all from the same cup. We all from the same. We all been sinners. All from the same cloth. Really, we none better than the other. We need to, to walk in forgiveness, and we need to walk in faithfulness. You know, uh, a beautiful life that brings glory to God. We need to unmask our affection to one another. It says here in 18, 321, If it's possible as much as life in you, live peaceful with all men. You know, I think the good Lord knows there's some, some people you just can't get, a, get along with. There's some family members you just can't get along with. There's some people at work you just can't get along with. But the good Lord said, as if it be possible, you know, live peaceful with all men. We should make an effort. We should be peaceful. We should be patient. It says here, a dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if their enemy hunger, feed him, and he thirsts, give him drink. For in so, so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, give place unto wrath. Paul quotes Deuteronomy uh, chapter 32 that shows that only God has a right to revenge. You know, God can do more with those enemies than you can. I mean, you can talk about them and you can spread gossip and you can tell them what they did to you, but God will deal with them. One of the biggest 
I can tell you, I got some good advice coming up. One by a Sunday school teacher said, God will take care of that. Said, you'll have to stand before God if you will too. That's why I never would forget that. I said, God will take care of that. Heap coals a fire upon their head, in Proverbs 25. By doing good, you might cause a sense of shame upon that person. They might try to do better. And later, you know, if you treat them kindly. But Paul is not this discussion a personal enemy, not national enemy. We shouldn't be passive in our life. You know, we should be also passionate. We should make both, uh, it takes both God and uh, us look bad when we're disobedient to him. It makes us look bad when we don't live a good life. It makes God, the children, it makes the church look bad sometimes the way we act. We can't get along. We've got children yet. Uh, you go to people and people said, well, they don't, they're not really, that's not really a good church. I said, that's uh, they're a bunch of hypocrites. Well, you know, I heard it all my life. You know what I tell them? Well, they're room for one, uh, one more. I mean, they go to Walmart, a bunch of hypocrites. They go to uh, McDonald's, a bunch of hypocrites. Piggly, Piggly Wiggly, I'd rather go to church with a bunch, bunch of hypocrites and go to heaven with them than, than go to hell with them. I mean, we're all hypocrites. We all come short. Be lying if I told you uh, if we wasn't. Uh, we got to say yeah, be humble. Know who you are. We are just telling people who you are as Christians. You know, uh, leave vengeance to the Lord. By doing the right thing, that person may regret what he's done later on, and you might become worth it out. You will have an opportunity to share the love of God, and at least you will try, to, you know, to mind on something else. I always said in my life, I... Uh, I always said that uh, that was good advice that man gave me. Uh, that you uh, you take care of your, you know, you do, you have to stand in front of God just like everybody else. Now I kind of changed that law. I got that same advice, and I still tell Patty. I said I got some new advice. Little, I heard Eddie uh, one time. Somebody said something to her. She said, "Mind your business." <laughs> so I'm going to do what. <laughs> I'm going to do uh, the best I can, and then when something else comes up that I don't like, well, I don't know the whole story, I just tell myself, mind your business. <laughs> Pray about it. Let, let the good Lord handle it. And that's between them and the Lord. I don't know what they're doing, but for me, I'm going to mind my business. My business is praying and serving and preaching the Word of God, and not my opinion. And I think that's good advice. Every now and then you get good advice. That's why they, uh, my, a professor told me you can learn from any person. Anytime somebody, any Sunday school teacher gets up there and teaches you or anybody preaches to you, you can learn something from everybody. Everybody has a different outlook. And as long as they, God speaks to them, you should be humble yourself to hear from God. And sometimes we hear from God in the smallest things. We hear we take the beauty of life and unity over the uh, more valued, more uh, expensive thing in life. You have something here precious. You got peace of mind. You got family. You got a beautiful uh, environment to live in. Sometimes we we need to value that more than the other things in life. I want uh, this little boy talking about unmasking himself. This little boy wrote a report in school. He was a young boy. And this is a report that he wrote in school. I mean, it says here, the boy was talking about his body. He said, your head is kind of round and hard, and your brains are in it, and your hair is on it. He went on to say, your face is in front of your head where you eat and make faces. He says here, your uh, neck is what keeps your head out of the collar. Your stomach is something that if you... Do not eat often enough, it hurts. But he said spinach won't help. Your shoulders are kind of like shells. And he said your spine is a long bone in your back that keeps you from folding up. Your back is always behind you, no matter how quick you turn around. He said your arm you got is to have is to pitch with uh, you so, and so you can reach the peanut butter. Your fingers stick out on your hands so you can throw a curveball and add up math. So your legs are what you have 
uh, if you don't have two of them, you can't get the first base, neither can your sister. Your feet are what you run on. Your toes are uh, what always get stuck. And he went on to say in his report, he said, and that all there is of you except what's inside, and I never saw it, the end. You know, there's a lot of things that the world's not seeing that. They see our outward uh, actions, and a lot of day, a lot of people are hateful, and they uh, mumber and they have that look. And, and I just like to say, well, maybe they're having a bad day. We judge people by their outward appearances. And the world is looking at the church like that. We need to be loving. We need to be praying. We need to be forgiven. We need to help one another. This God has gave, given us a great open door to help those who don't want to get out, who can't get out. We A great open door to write letters and make a phone call saying, I'm praying for you, or what can I do for you? If it's cost too much, I'm sure the church will help you. I mean, it, you, you should use this opportunity. We should unmask and we should put our love that God wanted us to have in shoe leather. The application that we have. Let us identify uh, any relationship that we need to uh, unmask or love you. At home, your husband, your wife, your family, do they know you love them? Do they know that you love the Lord? Have you ever told them at, at, at the dinner table that thank God for saving me? Uh, if nothing else, I would write it in my Bible. Thank God for saving me on that day, whatever. I would not leave this world let not let my family know that I have been redeemed and I'm going to heaven. How many people come out of these churches and they their families are not sure if they saved or not because of their actions? Don't let your family wonder. If God has ever saved you, tell your family, I thank God for saving me. Write it down somewhere. Don't let them know go through life and eternity and wonder if they're going to see you again. Are you telling your family that you love them? Are you showing them? Uh, let us be known for our love. I'd rather, like that man was carrying that bucket to his neighbor's house, I'd rather be known for trying to do what I could than just sitting back and watching it burn. You know what true love is? True love is telling the people on the second floor that the bottom floor is on fire. True love is telling people who are lost, never heard the word of God, that there is a Savior, that he is redeemed. We need to tell those people on the second floor there is a fire. Have he showed you love? You know, not uh, just to love when it's easy, but, you know, like Christ's love for us. Christ loved us and died for us that we might live for him. You know, we ought to love one another with that same love. 